So, um, I thought I would do a short video, hopefully a short video, on fret wire. Um, just because, interestingly, I mean, I work on vintage guitars and vintage guitars, it can be a bit tricky at times to find the right fret wire. Um, just because there are so many different variances and it depends on the guitar, depends on the type of fret wire you're looking for, whether it's nickel, whether it's brass, all those kind of things. But the important thing is, if you're going to change even a single fret on your guitar, then when you're looking at fret wires, you're going to be presented with something that looks a little bit like this when you're looking at dimensions and diagrams and stuff like that. So a lot of the basic cheap fret wire that is available on eBay, Amazon, stuff like that, generally won't give you this kind of diagram. And what they'll do is they'll give you a measurement, which is this measurement here. Which is the width of the actual fret. And they'll quite often give you that width, uh, that height measurement there, which is the measurement of the bit that goes into the um, fret slot. Okay, which is logical because you go as long as it's high enough and as long as it's wide enough, that should be enough. No, no. If only it were that easy. Um, particularly when you start looking at your collectible vintage guitars and things like that. Because what starts to really matter is this distance here. So that looks like a H, but actually that's supposed to be that width. Okay. So that is known as the... Or Different people describe it in different ways, but that's known as the tang, okay? The tang, all right? But it's measured in different ways. So some people will only give you this measurement, which is literally the width of that bit there. Some places will give you this measurement here, which is where these little sticky out bits are Okay, and the point of those sticky out bits are when you bang it into the fret slot, it stops the fret from riding up again in that direction. So it's designed to hold the fret in place, but you, you get different measurements for these. So the Yamaha that I'm currently working on, um, I took the fret out, bought some frets that were supposedly right for Yamaha, and they might be, but they I suspect they're probably right for newer, more modern Yamahas than my 74 Yamaha. Um, so what you'll find is that that measurement there is really important. That little H measurement there is really important. Because when you take your frets out, the width of the slot that you're going to try and put the fret back into is probably one of the most important um, things. So what you'll also get is these measurements here, like the height of the fret and the width of the fret. Yes, they matter, but if you get one that's slightly too wide or slightly too narrow, it's not the end of the earth. Because as long as the string connects with it and touches, you're generally fine. However, get this measurement wrong and get this measurement wrong and you're in danger of the fret not even fitting the gap, which then is a whole major headache. Um, so which is what's happened to me. So I ordered some fret wire that was supposedly right for a Yamaha, went to put it in, it's not right, it wouldn't fit. Um, so I then ended up kind of doing an eyesight check with them and looking at it and thinking, well, the old fret, the, the tang at the bottom looks narrower, you know? So then I thought, well, okay, I've ordered the wrong, so it's obviously not compatible for Yamaha. So then I ordered, um, I went to measure it, um, and I went to measure it, and you're now talking measurements are 
point one, point one and a half millimeters. Um, so you're talking tiny little measurements. So I ordered a, another set, which um, based on my less than scientific measurement um, is actually about 0 0.015 millimeters out. Um, and that's enough to mean that the second that I ordered wouldn't go into the fret slots. So what I then did was I then took um, another measurement using a set of these, which is a set of calipers, um, which then show me that my old fret that came out of the Yamaha was 0 0.05 of a millimeter. Um, and the new fret slot, fret wire that I'd ordered was 0 0.067. So you're talking, it's not a massive amount, but it's enough that the fret wouldn't go in. Is it a bloody fly on the camera? Um, so then I had to do a lot of scouring around and searching to try and find somewhere that would do the right measurement tang and, and stuff like that. And I have to say, it wasn't easy. So, so if you are fixing um, an old Yamaha, kind of 70s, or you're fixing something like an old 70s Aria or something like that, do be careful, because if you take the frets out, which you'll invariably need to do first, because they just don't conform to probably more modern fret wire. So what I'd say is take your frets out first, or take at least one out. Then what I'd say is get something like a set of calipers or a micrometer or something like that. Something that can digitally measure down to you know, 0 0.005 of a millimeter. Then take your measurement of the tang and then look for your fret wire because that way at least you'll only have to order them once. The good news is I haven't wasted any time because these will come in handy on something like a Gibson or a Martin or something like that. Um, but yeah, so that's just my tip really is take your fret out first, measure it, then look for the right fret wire, all right? And you'll save yourself a bit of time and a bit of money.